because some of the VFX software can't use the later versions of ACES yet. So if you've got Flames, Mukes, Houdinis and whatever involved, it's worth an ask to your VFX department and just say, can you cope with ACES 1.1? Well, you might have to go back to 1.0, but Nucodish supports both of them. Next thing is the, ACE, the working space. The, the working space of ACES 2065-1 is huge and that's wonderful, but it's not much, it's too big for us grading wise. So we've got a choice of two. We've got what's called ACES CC and ACES CC feels like um, log grading. So if you're familiar with um, say, um, our, um, ARRI Alexa grading, Blackmagic grading, um, FS7s and things like that, this is probably the one for you. If you're a bit old school and you like your, um, and you like your um, uh, film log and you're used to fil uh, film log Cineon, then CC ACES CCT is for you. That's probably the thing that's going to feel right. And I'm going to go for ACES CC because that's the thing I'm used to. There is a third one which you'll see out there, and that's ACES CG. And that's the CG working space for the VFX department. And that's the, similar to what we've got. It's a, it's a more restricted version, but that's for, as I say, that's for, that's for CG and VFX, and that's a linear version for them to use. Um, so we're going to select here, we're going to go to uh, scale to video. Um, right, next thing, notice that ACES, had the, that Nucoda has selected half as half float for the, um, the bit depth. This is good. Um, this is what's, what we normally use with ACES files. Uh, half float takes a bit of explaining. I've yet to find a really easy way of putting it, but it's, it's like... Um, it's like a 32-bit number, but only in a 16-bit wrapper. So it's got lots of precision, but it's not too big. But as I say, it's good. So it's a good thing. So it's got plenty, it's got plenty of information for us to use grading-wise. Note also, the other thing which you won't have seen before if you've not done ACES, on our output formats, the little H has come on indicating half float. So don't panic when you see that. That's the half float icon. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to select ACES. So we'll select ACES here. So that's ACES output transform. And the next thing we've got to do is select what's called the ODT, the output transform. So first of all, we're going to set REC 709 as our output. And because I'm an old school TV person, I'm going to select REC 709 clip. And in order to apply that ODT, I've got to click on the apply LUT. So that's done the basic setup of my project. So I can now open the project. Say so yes to that and OK to that. And here we are inside my project. So the next thing I'm going to do is import some media. And so I've got my little AAF to bring it in and I'll say yes to that. And I'll say import to that. And that will conform that lot. Now, what we've now got to do is select what's called the IDT which is the input device translator. Um, first of all, we've got this bit here, which is a bit of ARRI log C. And if I go to, I go to preferences and the important thing to properties, and the important thing to notice here is the properties tab doesn't work on the timeline. It actually works on the media browser up above. So if you suddenly think, well, I can't get the properties tab to do anything, it's because you're, you're not looking up the top you're rather than down the bottom easily forgotten. So first of all, we'll go to this bit of ARRI log C. We go to properties and where it says input transform, we change that to log C and we say apply and we say okay to that. Our second bit is a good, good old bit of REC 709. So we're going to go to properties again and we're going to our IDT. And we're going to go to REC 709 and we're going to say apply to that. I'm going to say okay to that. Our third bit is a bit of Sony S log. So we're going to go to properties again. We're going to go to Sony S log three, because it's Sony S log three. We're going to say apply. We say okay. Our fourth bit is a bit of red. And if we go to properties on that, the new code has automatically realized it's a red file. 
it's engaged the raw working and automatically put the color space into aces for it for us so there's nothing to do with that one the good thing about this is that you've still got all the flexibility of your red working you've got all the ability to change things like the iso the curves the the d noise you can change the sky the quality for what you which you're down converting so you don't end up with too big of files where you're while you're grading and things like that it's all there just the same so you don't lose any flexibility i'm going to say okay to that so if i now go to uh, memories i look at our files we've got that's our bit of log C, which looks quite nice. That's our bit of Rec 709, that looks quite nice. That's our bit of Sony S log, looks quite nice. And that's and that's our bit of red, which equally looks quite nice. The thing you should notice, which is different, you're probably not used to, is um, is ACES is what's called a scene referred system. And what ACES gives you is what it as the ungraded in inverted commas it gives you what what the eye saw at the time of shooting so if the camera if the camera was slightly unex, underexposed it would appear slightly dark if the camera was overexposed it was it would appear slightly light so my four shots actually because they were quite well exposed to start with have actually come out quite well and actually Considering they're from four completely different cameras, they actually look quite nice and it looks like we're going to have a good time. Um, I used to grade quite a lot of documentaries, so um, this for me would have been lovely because I what we typically had was interviews shot in the UK on, say, an FS7. Uh, we had a drama reconstruction shot on an Alexa. We had a load of archive, which probably mostly were X709. And the one guy that they had to go to the States for, which is probably shot on a red. So it's absolutely ideal for doing a, sh a, a show like that. Really, really good. So this is, this is the, 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 one of the real advantages of ACES, the ability to deal with multiple camera formats and bring them all into a sort of central sort of central air a, a nice central grade so you don't have to work for hours trying to bring them all into the middle um export is just the same as as ever you go to the export tab and export nothing different different nothing different there if we go go back to our um back to our settings tab we can go to the next party trick and a lot of projects these days have multiple deliveries and this is where ACES can help us again. So what I'm going to do, we've got our Rec 709 app output and we're happy with that. What I'm now going to do is add another output. What I'm going to add is a P3 output. So I come down here and I go to P3 and I add my P3 ODT. And the great thing is now I've now got my P3 output and my Rec 709 output. I hear you say, oh, but most of them want, a, want a, an HDR these days, so I'll add an HDR as well. So here we go. I'll add um, Rec 2020. Um, I've got a choice between ST for, for HLG and PQ. I'm going to go to PQ uh, and apply my luck. And I've now got my three outputs. I've got my Rec 709. I've got my uh, P3 and I've got my um, HDR. If I go to open the project and say yes to that, it's a nice easy way, it's a nice easy thing on the new coder to go between the three different projects. One is my Rec 709, two is my P3, and three is my HDR. Obviously, it's not quite so easy for you in the grading suite. You're going to have to change your monitor over and climb up on the desk and press buttons and goodness knows what else. But the three, three, the, the three projects are all there nice and easy for you. Obviously, what I would tend to do if I was doing this would be to make a timeline, grade it in Rec 709, then copy that timeline and do a trim pass to Rec to, 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 to P3. And what I would then do is copy the timeline again, do a trim pass to HDR and use things like the brightness regions to control the, to control the HDR part of the image. So I'd end up with three timelines and you'd have to do a trim, trim pass. But with luck, the trim pass could be quite minor, especially between things like the Rec 709 and the P3, which really is only a difference in saturation. So it should be nice and easy. 
If we go back to uh, the exit, back, back to my uh, project browser again, I hear you say, what about Netflix though? Because what Netflix want is, um, Netflix want an output with just the ACES, 20, the, the ACES data. And so I add an output and I take off the ODT. So I take off the ODT and just go to none. And what I can now do is I now go back to my project and say yes to that. And if I go back to um, my, look at my outputs, I can go to my fourth output, which is just uncorrected. And if I now go to uh, export media, and I now go to EXR, because ACES is based on EXR, it gives me the option to save EXR as SMPT 2065 ACES data. And that, that will give you the graded ACES data. Obviously, if, if you're doing Netflix, you need, I, I looked the other day, you need also to supply the ungraded ACES data. So you'll need to do, make a version with the grade script off and then in, export the ACES data as well. Um, so yeah, you'll have to do two outputs. So you're gonna end up with quite a few different outputs, but ACES makes it really easy to deliver all these outputs hopefully without too complicated a trim pass between all the different between all the different versions okay i'll hand you back to mark for some questions Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions, we've got some, uh, we've got the question tab at the center of your screen at the bottom. Um, please just ask anything. We're here for, you know, to help you out. Um, at the moment, Chris, we, you must have done a really good job. We've got no questions. <laughs> Um, is there anything, I'll ask a question, is there anything that you find that you really need to be aware of when, you know, working in ACES over other colour spaces? No, the, the, I mean, the big thing is you need to be aware, you need to make sure that you're in a compatible version of ACES with the rest of your workflow. So if you've got VFX, you need to make sure that the VFX team is using the same version of ACES as you are. And if they're not, what's the result of that? Um, it's backwardly compatible, so it should be all right. But if they're using, I mean, most of the time, the modern software from um, the various things like Nukes and Nukes and Houdini's and um, Flames and things like that support a modern version of Aces. So you should be all right. I mean, obviously, what they're doing is is they will work within. They will work within ACES CG to generate the CG and do the compositing and things like that. And they will then export as ACES 2065 data. And you, rather than bringing in the shot as a shot, you will bring in ACES 2065 data and you will not then apply an IDT because it's already been done and already there for you. And what you just do is then conform them into your timeline. Okay, um, so we've got a question from Tom. Um, how do you deal with the out of gamut colors in ACES? You, I mean, you've got to use, the, I mean, you've got to use the, the limiters appropriate to you. Obviously, um, depends in which way out of gamut they are. Um, I would certainly, I mean, I would use the limiters on Rec 709, whether you want to use a limited version of P3 to limit it. And again, when you come to your HDR, whether you use one of the limited ones or things like that to limit the gamma. Um, also, just to follow on from that is, um, how do you uh, soften the sensor clipping on the highlights? Um, sensor clipping. Ah, no way. I, I would just use a bit of soft, ordinary soft clip. Okay. And see how that helped me. Um, the ODT does a lot of the work for you. 
um, and that tends to keep the, the, the highlights from burning out, uh, particularly with the HDR one. If you get it right, it, it works quite well. Okay, we've got um, a question from um, admin. Um, he'd, he'd like you to give a brief uh, differences between uh, Rec 709 and 2020. Right, Rec 709 has um, quite a rest well by most modern standards rec 709 has quite a restricted color space if you look at the famous well-known cia cia 1931 chromaticity triangle you'll see rec 709 is the smallest smallest little oblong in the middle coming up from that you'll see a bigger oblong which is the rec which is the p3 one and that's the that's the color space used for theatrical which gives us a, a, a bit more, but not a lot more. Rec 2020 gives us considerably more color space, particularly in the green axis, but should give you quite a lot more color, color, colors to play with when you're doing your grade. It's adopted by um, uh, HDR, and a lot of the cameras now shoot can shoot Rec 2020, or, although were there any of them are actually capable of producing actual color right out to the limit of Rec 2020 uh, space, I'm not sure. As I say, it's considerably bigger than Rec 709 um, and will give you a lot more to play with. Okay, um, thank you. And then we've got one from uh, asking, are Adobe softwares capable of ACES workflows? Yes, they are. Uh, and so are they a good place to practice? Uh, the I, I've not tried it, so I don't know. Um, um, certainly, as I say, the Nuke, Nuke does it. We did some work some time ago with, with Nuke in, uh, for compositing. As far as I know, After Effects supports um, ACES. Um, I see if you go to the ACES um, website, there's, there's quite a bit of After Effects information on there. That'll tell you all about compositing in ACES. And you'll be working, as I say, in ACES CG for doing that. Okay. Um, that's all the questions so far, unless anyone else has got any more questions. Um, so over your time in, I've got one. Over your time, Chris, uh, grading over, I think we discussed this earlier on, 40 years-ish, um, what has been your favourite sort of colour space to work into? Work in? Most of the time I've worked in good old Rec 709, I have to say. It's, um, it's the thing I'm used to. It's the thing I was brought up with. Um, it came from, you know, just everything I'm used to. I've done a couple of jobs in P3 uh, and it does give you a bit more and uh, it does look nice on the big screen. It just gives you that tiny bit, bit extra. Um, uh, I've, I've only played in HDR, so I, I, I haven't done that much in HDR and, and it is interesting. It's a look that I think you've got to get used to. I think um, HDR grows on you. Um, it's um, an impressive look. Um, but I think you've got to grade. I think you've got to modify your grading style towards it. Just pushing it like mad doesn't work because it just looks horrendous. You've got to make use of the highlights, and you've got to make the highlights work for you to bring out the best, to, to bring out the sparkle, and to bring out the, the the highlight detail, rather than just pushing it like mad and making it really, really bright. Oh yeah, no, thanks. Um, so. I think, unless anyone has got any other questions, oh, we do. Um, uh, is there any book or course that uh, you would like to refer anyone to? Um, they're a video editor currently, uh, but upgrading their skills to grading as well. Right. The, the, I, I can't recommend a book for grading, but if you're into ACES, if you want to look, if you want to follow up more on ACES, uh, the thing to do is to go to the ACES website 
if you just Google ACES, there's the, the Academy have got a website and there's a couple of documents on there that go into really heavy detail um, from first principles, all about the difference between REC 709, um, REC 709 uh, P3 and REC 2020, goes into all the colour space implications, um, goes into all the differences between ACES CC, ACES CCT and ACES CG and the various softwares and the, and the different effects of the different things. Um, it's quite a good document. I think it's called, they call it the ACES Primer and it's really, really good. They've also got some documents on there for doing ACES on their various different platforms like doing it on Resolve and doing it on Nucoda and doing it on uh, After Effects. So well worth an afternoon spent reading it all. It's very well written, very down to earth. It's not too technical. And as I say, a really good afternoon's read. Um, if, you, if you want to get heavily into the colour side of grading, there's um, a book, something, I can't remember, uh, Colour Reproduction Systems for Television Systems, I think it's called. Um, it's about two inches thick and about 50 quid. Um, it's got everything you could ever want to know about the technical side of colour for television and film. Um, it's available on Amazon and if you, if you want to go into the technical side of it, that's the book to read. Cool. Uh, and we've got another question here. Uh, they have a camera FS7 yep. and they shoot in S-Log2. Yep. Which linear LUT would be best for video for YouTube? I, I mean, for YouTube, I'd just stick to your proper S-Log2. I mean, your S-Log2 should give you the right answer and give you something nice. Um, YouTube is fair. YouTube doesn't have a funny gamma or doesn't have anything terribly funny. So if you just make it look nice with your S log two and export to S log two, you should be fine and it should look really nice. Uh, we use them all the time at the school. We, we're, we're quite fans of the FS seven. It works really well. So I hope you're having fun with it. Um, yeah, unless there's any other sort of questions. Um, we will sort of wrap up. We're going to put this on. Oh, go on, Chris. Would you like? I'm going to say, does anyone want me to go through anything again or show you through anything again? I'm happy to do it. Um, silence is bliss, as they say. <laughs> um, so if there is any other questions that you want to put, uh, put to Chris, um, Okay, I've got one now as we um, S log three is good for LUT um, uh, uh, for Rec 709 or 2020. Yeah, it should be fine for both. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine for both. Yeah. Okay. As I say, Sony, they, they produce nice pictures. We, we, we use them all the time at the school. They're really good. Um, okay, I think we'll wrap up, Chris. Um, thank you for your time and uh, giving a, a quick uh, demo of um, ACES. And um, like I said, if anyone else has any more questions for us at Digital Vision about Nucoda and ACES, um, ask. And uh, if not, ask Chris, but we have a quick one now. Um, is, uh, does DV have any LUTs um, for Sony cameras? Um, does Nucoda have any LUTs for Sony cameras? As far as I know, it's supported. It's yeah. supported in ACES. There's full S log one, S log, S log one, S log two, and S log three in ACES. If I go, hang on, I can. If I come out of ACES, uh, yes, yeah, S S log two and S log three by standard in Nucoda. So that'll cope with 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 as I say, the FS seven and other Sony cameras. Um, so yeah, no, I'd like to, yeah, thank you all, um, for coming on and 
spending the time with us. Uh, I've got another question. Uh, do you like to work with LUTs or from a growing um, professional? I have to say I'm quite a fan of LUTs. Um, they, it, there are some people that sort of say, oh no, LUTs are bad, but if, it get, if, you're, if, you, if you've been given, like I'm often given, um, a thousand shots to grade in a 10 hour day, um, having, using a LUT to get it in the ballpark and then just tweaking from there is a pretty good move especially when someone's giving you four different cameras and a load of archive. Um, so you've got to sort it all out. So LUTs are a, quite a nice way forward. Um, in terms of dramas, I think a LUTed work, what I call a LUTed workflow, is a really good way forward, where you work with the cinematographer at the start, uh, prepare a show LUT, which you can then apply to the rushes as the show is shot. The rushes go on to the editor with the LUT baked in. The editor edits the show. The good news is throughout the edit, the show looks nice because it's got the LUT applied. All the viewing copies that are made, that are sent out to the execs and whatever, all look really nice because they've got the, the LUT applied. What you then do is you import the rushes into the new coder and you then apply the show LUT as your LUT. And when the cinematographer comes in from the grade, your starting point is the same as the last viewing copy. So you're right in the middle of your grade. So all you've got to do is that shot that was a bit dark on the first scene and that shot that perhaps we wanted it a bit warmer for the deaths, a bit cooler, sorry, for the death scene. And perhaps the shot in Scotland is all a bit bleak and too bleak. We can make it warmer. All of those will be exactly as they appeared in your viewing copy. So you won't be stirring around trying to find um, a midpoint. You'll already have the LUTs already done the work for you and you'll all be on common ground. And a, a LUTed workflow is just a great way to work. Um, so we, we have a question. Um, can you generate a LUT for a D, uh, DSLR camera in Nucoda? The DSLR cameras, um, the, what you need is a, is a LUT making software and you've got two pieces of software that are available for doing it. There's a software called Lattice, which is a Mac program, and that will do, that will do LUTs for you. And that will take, that's got quite a large selection of LUTs, will allow you to preview them and whatever, and will allow you to save as .cmx for, CMS for a new coder. That's a paid for piece of software. Out there just recently has come a piece of software called, called Gross Grade, and that's really, really good. It's written by a Russian guy. Um, and that is, is, as I say, really, really, really good. You can take, dare I say, um, uh, um, resolve LUTs, put them in and convert them to digital vision LUTs beautifully. And the, 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 the they are absolutely like for like when they're finished. The result on a, on a resolve is exactly the same on a new coder. And I use a Blackmagic CMS LUT that was created by Gross Grade all the time because I shoot on Blackmagic and it looks absolutely brilliant. And as I say, that's called Gross Grade and it's free. And you can, you can build all sorts of weird, wonderful LUTs on there. Um, really, really good. Worth a download. Is there any um, books or articles or anything like that out there to help someone learn uh, like colour, uh, philosophy, psychology, that sort of thing? Don't know. Um, as I say, if you want the technical one, you want the, the earlier one I mentioned, that's the technical side of it. Uh, there are some. I, um, there's a focal guide to cinematography that's got about two very good chapters on the perception of colour, the grade, all about LUTs, uh, all about um, P3 and things like that. Really, really good. Um, it's a, it's published by Focal and it's the Focal Guide to Cinematography. I've got a copy. It's really, really good and got a lot of really interesting stuff on it in, in it in the meantime. So, and not too expensive. It's not silly money. It's quite a good purchase. Probably almost certainly available from, from Amazon. Uh, 
Uh, we've just got a question. Is it a paid LUT? Um, I think, is that referring to... Lattice is a paid for piece of software, yeah. yes. Gross grade is, 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 um, is, is um, free. It's just a download. Yeah, yeah, for the D D DSLR, yeah. Um, okay. The other thing for DSLR use um, is a piece of software called Film Convert. I'm frantically trying to get the guys at DV to support it. It'd be lovely if it could. At the moment, Nucoda doesn't support it, um, but it would be lovely if it did. And that is a fabulous bit of software for generating um, um, grading with the DSLR. Uh, sadly, it works with the opposition, but it, really, really good. Um, okay, unless there's any more questions, uh, we'll wrap up. Um, yeah, once again, thanks, Chris, for your time. Uh, delivering this has been really interesting and thank you for you know everyone around the world um you know coming and uh listening in and like i said if you have any other questions you know please please feel free please feel free to email us uh and you know we'll get back to you and if not you know keep safe out there and i, I wish you all the well all the best thanks a lot